So, hey guys, going back to Pascal's principle. Pascal's principle says that force within a fluid forces are equally exerted in all directions. And so you can use that uh, very easily, like with a piston. You can take, let's say, a little mouse. That's well, what happened to his face? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> and what you could do is use that mouse to move an elephant. Oh, that's a good elephant. Not too bad. Because all he does is apply force over this area. It's transmitted throughout this fluid and is applied to this larger area. Now, of course, the mouse is going to be um, giving up some distance for force. But well, that's okay. So let's say you take the elephant on this piston, we have it connected with fluid, and we can press the piston up. Now the big piston doesn't move very far, but the little one does. So you take the mouse over a little area, push it through a fluid, and apply that force to a large area. So it can move the, while well, the mouse moves a lot, the elephant moves a little, but you do get to move that larger force. So that's how hydraulics work. That's how brake work on cars. You take the little brake pedal, you push the brake pedal, it goes through a fluid and goes applies to the brakes. And so you are able to apply brakes to stop the rotors on your car through the fluid. Because force is applied equally in all directions. That's a weird one, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. So that's Pascal's principle. I told you not to break it. Now we have to pause this and everything. I tell you what. Oh, I see. So let's talk about let's talk about Bernoulli. So Bernoulli's principle. Hey guys, I think Bernoulli's principle is the weirdest one of um, all, because he says that within a flowing fluid, within a flowing fluid you're going to have lower pressure. So that means if you have a stream of water, then the pressure inside that water is going to be lower than the pressure outside the water. All right, now, what did Mr. Shoes already tell you? He told you that pressure goes from high to low, and so that introduces some very interesting things. If pressure goes from high to low and a flowing fluid has lower pressure than on the outside, then you'll find that there's going to be a push towards that flowing fluid, okay? And so many people take a look at, say, like the wings of an airplane, and they say they're designed in a teardrop, that's not very good, in a teardrop shape, something like that. No, that's not very good either. That's a fish. That's more like a fish. Yes, that was Okay, so let's see. Uh, a teardrop, something like that. That's better. Okay, so in teardrop shape, because they say <clears throat> as the airplane cuts through the air, the air takes longer to go over, uh, takes, no, it has to go this, uh, oh yeah, okay, here's what happens. So it cuts through the air, in order to get from here to here, that air has to go over a longer distance, which means it's going faster. And according to Bernoulli's principle, Faster flowing fluid, and air is a fluid in physics, don't forget, means that you have low pressure there and high pressure there, which means that it's going to go from, Mr. Chu says, high to low. So there's going to be a push up. Now, the problem I have with that is how do airplanes fly upside down? Oh, that's it, because they're falling the whole time. No, that's not it. Well, you can use like the elevator more to keep you up. Like, okay. Like, but that's not it at all. So let's take the airplane and have the wing look like this. As the airplane moves this way, what happens to the air? It goes and is pushed down by the wing. So. The air is being pushed down. What does the air do? It, Newton's third law, action-reaction, pushes up. 
So most of the lift that an airplane gets is due to air. Air, right? It's being pushed down, we push it up. So it's mostly the tilt of the wing that's causing this lift. Sure, you can get a little bit from that, but it's not the reason why airplanes can fly upside down, because they fly at an angle. Sure enough, they're getting this pushed down, pushed up, just like an helicopter, right? So helicopter fly, pushes down on the air, air pushes back on it, it's lifted up. So when they're flying upside down, they're not really actually, they're not going straight, they're going down. Yeah, you'll find them tilting their wings at an angle. Absolutely. Because if they don't, then they're... They they're not going to get enough to keep up, yeah. because they don't have the Bernoulli thing going on, right? In fact, they got the Bernoulli thing working against them, flying upside down. Okay, so let's take another example. Let's take a, a chimney with a fireplace. And just for effect, we'll have some fire here. Okay, and we got smoke coming out. Now, if there happens to be a breeze outside, doo -doo 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 -doo, then what does that do to the pressure outside? No. We have it all on videotape here. Okay. Would you like us to post it to your mother's YouTube account? Hello. No. <laughs> well, she will get one real soon. All right. So, if you have flowing air up here, what's this do to the pressure according to Bernoulli? Yes? Pressure, there's, lower pressure. there's lower pressure outside. So if this is lower outside, this is higher inside, then which way is the air going to go? That way. It's going to go up through the chimney, right? And the smoke goes out and everybody's happy, right? Well, that works fine until you come up with a system where all of a sudden that the pressure here is higher here and the pressure here is lower. What's it going to do then? Yes? Yeah, it's going to go in there and the smoke's going to come into your room. And that's not a good thing. So most of the time, chimneys work just fine because they use Bernoulli's principle and we know that hot air is less dense than cold air, so it don't, generally flows up. But if you get into a situation where it's a high to low, then you could have a problem. Let's do another situation where you have a high to low. Let's take a house. Right? And you come along with a, oh, I don't know, a tornado. And the tornado goes over your house. Now, what is at the center of this tornado? High or low pressure? Low pressure. Very low pressure. So this low pressure zone goes over your house. What happens to your house? What's the comparison? Oh, it gets, it gets the ticket blown out of it. Indeed, because it's high pressure inside the house. And so as the tornado goes over your house with the low pressure, high pressure, oftentimes the foundation holds, but the house roof blows right off from high to low pressure. Boom. If the foundation is not solid, it can blow the whole house over. Sometimes it can push the whole house up. Fascinating. Simply fascinating. Okay, so you go from high to low. Everybody okay with that? Okay. So that's one why some people suggest during a tornado or storm you might like crack open a window to try to equalize the pressure. Really? Yeah. That's actually been proven on that. Exactly. It's not enough, is it? It'll all your windows. Okay. Oh, oh, here's another Pascal principle one. Ready for this? What if you have, oh, I don't know, a person? Right? So you've got a person. You got pants and shirts and everything. Okay. Okay. So his head's over there. Okay. You killed him. According to Pascal's principle. Pascal's. Well, let's say we take this person here on Earth, and we transfer the person here to the Earth with no atmosphere. Okay. What's an atmosphere? How do their weights compare? Different. Yes. Lighter? With no atmosphere. With no atmosphere. Right. Eh, thanks for playing. Yes? It will be lower because they're like density. Well, 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 so oh, wait. I'm getting into stuff that we shouldn't get into yet. That's the next part of the chapter. Sorry. What? I'm thinking ahead. All right. So Bernoulli's principle. Spray bottles work the same way. Everybody's happy. Okay, I got a couple things to show you. Ooh, yay. Demonstration. Demonstration. Wow. Ready? Don't break it, Parker. Amazing.